When we're searching for information on the internet, or in a library catalog, or even in a book, we probably don't think much about how the creators of the information, or the creators of the search tool we're using to find it, chose to organize the information. But understanding how information is structured can help us find the information we're looking for more effectively. For example, suppose you're writing a paper about the civil rights movement in the United States, and you're looking for background information in an encyclopedia of American history. Knowing whether the book is arranged alphabetically, or chronologically, or some other way, such as with an alphabetical list of people in one volume and a chronological list of historic events in another volume, will make it easier to find information about something like Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream speech, which he gave during the March on Washington for Jobs and Freedom on August 28, 1963. The table of contents at the beginning of a book can help us determine how the book is organized. The alphabetical index at the end of a book can help us find information about topics that might be discussed in several different parts of the book. It may be less obvious how information is organized in online environments, but it is useful to investigate the way pieces of information are organized, named, and connected to each other on a website, in a library catalog or database, or in an app is called information architecture. Information architects decide what categories the various pieces of information fit into and what those categories should be called in order to make it easier for the searcher to find particular pieces of information. Some organizational structures are informal and may include user-generated categories like tags, the category names you might use for posts on a personal blog, or hashtags, the category names you find on social media. Some organizational structures are more formal and make use of controlled vocabulary that consistently uses the same term to describe the same category of information, making it easier to find. Library of Congress subject headings are an example of a controlled vocabulary that is used to describe what library resources are about. Libraries in the United States use Library of Congress subject headings to categorize and organize information. The Dewey Decimal System, which determines where each item is located on the shelf in a library, is based on Library of Congress subject headings. The system is designed to ensure that books on the same subject will be located near each other. Discovering the subject headings that relate to your topic make it easier to find relevant sources when searching a library catalog. But organizational structures, including Library of Congress subject headings, are created by people who reflect the biases of their time and place. The terms used and the ways they relate to each other also change over time, which can complicate the process of accessing information. Consider the subject heading, Physicians. Which of these terms do you think are actual Library of Congress subject headings? Why would there be subject terms for African American physicians and physicians female, but not for white physicians or physicians male? These categories reflect cultural and historical assumptions that the term physicians refers to white men and that only physicians who differ from that norm need to be identified separately. 
If you are using a library catalog to find information about female doctors, the physician's female subject term may be useful in narrowing your search results. But if you are browsing the shelves for books about doctors, the fact that books about female doctors are in a different location than books about doctors in general may reinforce the stereotype that doctors tend to be white men. Sometimes bias in subject headings is corrected. In 2014, students from the Dartmouth Coalition for Immigration Reform, Equality, and Dreamers petitioned the Library of Congress to replace the term illegal aliens, which is increasingly considered to be a dehumanizing racial slur, with the term undocumented immigrants. After reviewing the student's request, in 2016, the Library of Congress rejected the proposed term undocumented immigrants, but replaced the term illegal aliens with the terms non-citizens and unauthorized immigration. These improvements address racial bias in the old subject heading, but they may complicate the search process for people who are researching immigration because newer sources will be classified with the new subject heading while older sources will still use the outdated term. Understanding how information is organized and the strengths and weaknesses of those organizational systems can help you search more strategically, think more critically about the types of results you are and are not finding, and improve your searches as you go along.